Hey guys, I got a real head scratcher for you today. Check this out. What the heck is it? So this came to me a while ago and I didn't know what to do with it for a while because I had no idea what it was. I've been doing World War II military history for 25, 30 years and I never came across one, never saw one. It's actually, you know, just a hard rubber or, or plastic case. Uh, it does have information which indicates it's military issue. So of course the guy who sent it to us knew what it was and he thought Legacy was the best place to sell it and I agree, but again, I didn't know anything about it other than it is an escape and evasion kit, also known as a barter kit. Now, once you know what's inside, that makes sense. Uh, this, uh, again, this is sealed uh, uh, hard rubber. And when you open it up, here's a picture of what is inside. There are some European gold coins. So I understand there's francs in here. Um, some of them had Belgian uh, uh, gold coins. Also wedding rings, anything that would be known to be gold. Uh, and of course the idea is if a pilot was shot down, we'll talk a little bit more about what pilot, but if a pilot was shot down behind enemy lines, we've already seen the silk maps that they carried. And those silk maps are the silk so they, they didn't get uh, destroyed when they were wet. Uh, they would use those for escape routes out of Europe or in the Asian theater out of, um, out of China in particular. But of course, not only do you need a, a, an escape map, but you have to have a willing public that will help you. Now, one thing that motivates the public is, of course, gold coins or gold. Uh, there were two variations of this made. One was an Asian kit. Uh, they did not have European gold coins, and in fact, I don't think much of Asia had any gold coins, or at least, you know, I can't say that emphatically, but uh, the explanation that I read is if you're on a, uh, uh, an island, a tiny island, or in the Philippines, or in China, uh, they don't know gold coins at all, but they do know jewelry, and so they had rings uh, with uh, emeralds on them. They had a gold chain. Uh, they also had a Swiss watch, which was very valuable. Less valuable in Europe, but very valuable in Asia. So they put together these two kits. One kit for the Asian uh, shot down pilots. Uh, I'm told there are less of those. They were also encased in plastic and a little bit easier to break open. This, however, was the Atlantic Theater or European variation. And these are very, very hard to open. I'm gonna come up closer and show you. It does have a, a mold mark where it came together. Um, but as far as I can tell, this one was never opened. Okay, we're gonna go over both sides of this has this inscription, which is um, part of the story. Uh, of course, if found, there's an acronym here, but basically Norfolk, Virginia, it's, it's the uh, uh, military command center for the aviator pilots in the U.S. Navy. So again, aviator pilots, U.S. Navy, all the ones that I have found on the internet were marked in this manner. And it basically says return to Norfolk, Virginia. Like you're gonna find this uh, in Europe somewhere and say, oh, I better mail it back to uh, Norfolk, Virginia. But they were worth some money. By the way, this is on both sides. And at the time, uh, the gold value inside of this was uh, worth about $25 to $30. Now this is the seal. So there is a molding seal. Uh, theoretically, I guess somebody could cut this open, but again, what I read is very hard to open. And so they would take their, their knife or their, uh, their bayonet and, and have to like cut through this. And even when you take it open, it almost looks like it was sealed in hard rubber. Here's some examples of some that are opened. And you can see the gold coins, uh, again, European gold coins. You can see the uh, wedding bands, uh, which were 24 karat gold with a total value in the, that market of about $30. Now, when you, when you Google it, what it will tell you is these were given to pilots and paratroopers. I wanna say, hold on a minute, because I don't think that information is true. Uh, there's actually one here in the Smithsonian Institute, and all of the ones, again, all of the ones that are known uh, came from naval aviators. So my guess would be that there was probably a plan to give paratroopers one of these. Uh, it, it just doesn't make any sense because there's over 100,000 paratroopers, and I don't know how many pilots combined, they made about 3,500. 
So there wasn't enough for everybody. I think they probably started with naval aviators. There's a surviving pilot that said that you would go and sign it out. There is a serial number right here, and this one, I see 1286. I'm sure Randy will get that. And then the one uh, from the Smithsonian is 1377. Uh, but also, just to verify that this is real, uh, when you x-ray it, the serial number is stamped inside as well. So this uh, 1286 is also stamped inside. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, one of these showed up on Pawn Stars, and uh, Rick didn't know what it was. He said, seems to me it's some kind of a CIA thing. And then, of course, he has to uh, call an expert, so he gets a guy from IMA who, um, they actually had two of them on their site, um, and there was one that was open and one that was unopened. Uh, not a big surprise, the unopened ones are worth more than the opened ones. Uh, the reason being is they did offer these for sale. So let me get back to the, the pilot said he would sign it out when he went on his mission by serial number. And then of course he had to return it or it would be docked from his pay. So he returned it when he came back. There is no record of one of these ever being used. If you know of any record or story of one of these being used, uh, everything I read and saw a couple YouTube videos about it, there's no record of one of these ever being used. So at the end of the war, they had 3,500 of them. And in 1979, the US government decided to sell their stock of, of these barter kits. The first round they sold about 10% of them, 35, and they were going for about $400 to $500. They did say one person bid $4,000, um, and I don't know what the current value was then. Today's, in today's market, I'm told the current value is about $1,500 in gold. Um, now, the other thing about this is the, the only place they advertised the sale of these items, and, and by the way, they sold them in 79 80, if you look at this one, this one looks to me like it was sold in the 1980 auction. Um, and then also 81, and they sold, so they all, sold all 3,500 of them. They all went to pneumatists, 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 anyway, coin collectors. <laughs> they all went to coin collectors because they advertised in coin collecting um, catalogs that the government was going to be offering these. And this is nothing new because I know I, I used to buy proof sets all the time and I would get notice at limited time that the government is selling off proof sets or silver dollars. So the government did offer these for sale in 79 to, through 81. And uh, they were bought by coin collectors who immediately only cared about the coin. And so they would cut them open and they would uh, save the coins and throw the this black plastic case, I'm sure they threw it away because again, if you look at how these were opened, um, they were sealed in here and they really need to destroy the case to get to the goods inside. Uh, so these were uh, bought up by coin collectors. And um, again, going back to Pawn Stars, uh, the expert that he brought in said, there's only about 20 st known still in the sealed box. So again, out of 3,500, uh, the coins are all scattered uh, through collections throughout our country, uh, but sealed cases like this, there's only about 20 known. So of course, we want to know what is this worth, and the person that sent it to us is selling it on consignment, so we will be adding it to our uh, website. It is a consignment item. Uh, it's something I would love to own, but it's, it's not a gun, and I can't keep everything, uh, and it's, it's pretty steep. Actually, Rock Island sold one not too long ago. Here's a picture of the auction. They did an estimate. It went well above the estimate. You can see here it went for almost $15,000. I'm, it's basically, what is it worth? It's whatever somebody is willing to pay for a piece of history. Again, World War II, naval aviators, I believe it was intended to go to other people. Probably when they say paratrooper, I would think uh, somebody who is an intelligence officer, OSS, being parachuted behind enemy lines, this would make sense. But to just issue it to the paratroopers at D-Day, that, that makes no sense at all. So I can't say it wasn't issued to paratroopers. I do know that it had to have been issued to naval aviators, probably other pilots, and probably, and in Pawn Stars, Rick talks about probably secret operations being parachuted behind enemy lines. This would make a lot of sense, but you would want to get rid of that because you don't want to get captured with that uh, on your person. 
So once we determine the value, then we say, well, how do I know the coins are in here? How do I know that you guys are the, the consigner? We'll pick on him. The consigner didn't, you know, cut this open, take the coins out, and then reseal it. Um, well, the only way to know, and on Pawn Stars, they took it to uh, the local uh, x-ray machine, I guess at one of the local doctors, and they x-rayed it. You can see here that they, they can see the contents inside. Uh, we did the same thing. You can see here, they're definitely, the coins are still in here. You can see the, um, the wedding bands, uh, they are still in here. And then you also see the serial number of the kit, uh, which is on the outside and matches the serial number on the inside. So we know for a fact that the gold is still in here. Uh, as far as I can tell, this has never been opened, uh, which makes it more highly collectible than the ones that have been opened. Well, thank you for watching a little bit of history. I found this fascinating and somebody out there is really going to love it. And uh, the problem is, you know, you put it on display and people say, what the heck is it? You can't, you don't want to open it up and show them, but once it's yours, you can do whatever you want with it.